for millennia, cosmology, astronomy, and the study of space have invited the fascination of the human race. What do you think of when you think of space? Is a vast, scary, unknown, cool? For me, it's a mix of all of those things. It's also like oxygen, fueling the burning questions inside of me. Where do we come from? Why are things the way they are? What lies out there, and what can we learn from it? It's an opportunity to make amazing technologies that do unimaginable things. And the best chance that I've gotten to channel that fascination has been through the Brown Space Engineering team, BSE. BSE was the first real community I found at Brown, and the story of how I got involved probably resonates with a lot of you. I showed up to the fall activities fair of my first year, clueless, and signed up for way too many things. Um, I ended up going to the meetings for about 10% of those, and this one stuck. Since then, however, BSE has turned into a fifth course or a part-time job. So what do I spend all of this time doing? This tiny thing right here is a 3D printed model of Equisat our biggest project to date. It was conceptualized by a group of four undergraduate students, just like you and me, um, in a class where they were expected to design a space system. Soon, however, that assignment turned into a hobby. And then it went from a hobby to a passion. <coughs> and then finally, last year, after eight years, thousands of hours put in by hundreds of students, Equisat was launched from the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. I had the awesome opportunity to be there for that launch. But the most inspiring part for me is that Equisat was made entirely on this campus by Brown University undergraduates for $3,776.91. For context, as far as space missions go, that's not a lot. The average commercial satellite today costs about 13,000 times that. And the most meaningful part of that for me isn't just the innovation. It's the mission. Our mission is to make space accessible to everyone. All our designs are open source and freely available on the web. We hope to be part of what we see as the ongoing trend in the aerospace industry towards democratization and decentralization. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. There are sort of three major trends that I see guiding this transition. The first is new space. Space engineering isn't just about going to the far reaches of our solar system. It's also about launching new satellites, maintaining the ones already in orbit, conducting scientific research, restocking and refueling the International Space Station. All of these things are avenues that today in the United States, private companies like SpaceX, which I'm sure you've all heard of, Blue Origin or Virgin Galactic, have increasingly entered. All of the excitement around aerospace entrepreneurship has led to the coinage of the term new space, a sort of catch-all for ventures and companies operating outside the sort of bubble of big government agencies and NASA contractors. New Space Global, 
a, a company that tracks the new space industry has seen the number of companies that it, that it researches go up in the last five years from 125 to over 1,000. Their CEO, the aptly named Richard Rocket, sees that number climbing to 10,000 in the next 10 years. The second part of that trend is the entry of new national players. For a lot of us, the narrative around aerospace, especially since the turn of the second half of the last century, has been focused on sort of the Cold War space race. The USA and the USSR locked in a sort of techno-symbolic ideological battle. But that's not what space is about anymore. China today has more satellites in space than Russia does. India plans to launch its first crewed mission in 2022. Israel, Luxembourg, Canada, Japan have all increased their aerospace footprint. And finally, the advent of the era of small satellites. Second from the right, that's Equisat, taken from the ISS. By 2022, 600 small satellites will be launched every year. That number is three times as large as the total number of satellites that are currently launched. And the key here is that small satellites are increasingly made by small teams and research groups like ours. We operate through programs such as NASA's educational launch of nanosatellites. Normally, a commercial satellite of Equisat size would cost about $85,000 to launch. Through this NASA initiative, we get our launch for free. While this may still function under the sort of purview of NASA, programs like these have allowed thousands of students to engage and be involved in the development of new aerospace technologies. And yet, even as this transition happens, my involvement with BSE has shown me some of the key challenges. The first one, and the most important one for me, is representation. Even at a campus as diverse as ours, we struggle to recruit a set of people who truly reflect the diversity of the set of people who are interested in aerospace. And that's not really limited to our organization. In my classes in engineering across this campus, I rarely see women or other openly LGBT people or other students of color. The second thing that frustrates me is even as I get excited about opportunities for collaboration, as you climb up the aerospace ladder, you see that narrative lose out to, its ten to a tendency towards sort of strange nationalism. Just in my time here, we've been able to work with more than a dozen other student groups from across nine countries and six continents and help them build their own satellites. Yet as new countries enter into the aerospace industry, the narrative around that is focused entirely on sort of a new space race. And the final challenge, education. How do you strike the balance between the technical and the spectacle? How do you convey key scientific knowledge without taking away from how exciting and cool these things are just to be involved in? In a field like ours, it's really easy to make someone feel like they're out of their depth. But the key to education is to excite people, not to scare or bore them. We've been trying to address some of these challenges. That's our mission. We conduct a ton of outreach going to schools K through 12 across Rhode Island and beyond, teaching people not just about space and the work we do, but science in general. Um, we go to museums, a personal favorite of all of ours, Water Fire. Um, we host discussions. We recently launched our BabySat mentorship program. Um, 
a system by which we pair young engineers with older ones who share some aspect of their identity. We find ourselves increasingly at events like this, sharing our excitement with you. My request to you is this. Get involved. Support STEM education. Read Space News. Read BSE News. Go to, La go to the LAD Observatory and watch the moon through the telescope. If a child walks up to you and says that their dream is to be an astronaut, ask them what their favorite planet is. Tell them that they'll get there. Help us democratize space. Thank you.